there. Look who's here, our friend Dr. Digging Stone. Now he likes gold, so let's give him a glittery gold greeting like this. What's up, Doc? Hi, everyone. Wow, even our glittery gold greeting didn't make you smile. Didn't you find the gold that you were looking for? No. My treasure tracker broke, so I went to the village market and bought this gold sniffing monkey. Oh. Except he hasn't found anything either. He's not even sniffing. Maybe he's asleep. Um, that's not the problem, Doc. You mean he's sick? Hang, oh. hang on, little buddy. I'll get you to the vet. Um, no, I mean he's, like, not real. Someone sold you a, a stuffed monkey. So this isn't a gold sniffing monkey? I'm afraid not. This treasure hunt is going from bad to worse. My treasure tracker blows a fuse. My gold sniffing monkey is a fraud. What next? What else could go wrong? I need a hug. I'm sorry you're not feeling very happy. Me too. This hug is nice. See, you know whose comfort is even better than a hug? God. My friends and I were just talking about this, how God comforts us when we're feeling sad. Maybe, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe the real treasure here isn't gold or diamonds or jewels, but maybe it is something else. Hey, now you're getting it. But just in case it is gold or diamonds or jewels, I'm gonna keep looking. Have a great day, new friends. Maybe I'll try a gold sniffing snake this time. Poor Dr. Digging Stone. At least he's getting closer to finding the real treasure. Maybe if we keep telling him, he'll catch on that he's priceless to God. Welcome back, treasure seekers. Who's ready to dig into another adventure here at Treasured VBS? We're celebrating God's love for each of us because we are priceless to God. Let's sing about that right now. priceless treasure God knows me God hears me God is my comfort I am his and there's nothing better forgiven and chosen forever I am a treasure I am the prize. 
Sometimes treasure hunters or archaeologists follow maps to help them find hidden treasures. You may have read a book or seen a movie in which an X marked the spot where something valuable could be found. But X is kind of boring. If there was a treasure map leading to me, I'd have a picture of my pup Pepper mark the spot. If you want to find Kate, look for a picture of Pepper. So what about you? With your families, talk about this. If we were following a map to you, what is your favorite thing that would be on your map to show where you were? God doesn't need a map or symbols like a dog to find us, though. God sees you and knows all about you. for us to forget that God is busy and active all around us every single day. But when we take time to look for evidence of God, God will not be forgotten. Last week, I tasted something that reminded me of how sweet God's love is. I enjoyed a yummy s'more around a bonfire with friends. What's something you've tasted that reminded you of God's sweet love for us? Share with your family about God's goodness that you have seen and tasted.
It looks like we're in a really old place where people long ago buried some cool treasures. As you're sharing your God sightings, I'm seeing more and more of those tre treasures. Sometimes people hide valuable things in caves, in the dirt, or in old ruins, sort of like this. Other priceless things are made by God. They're kind of tucked away and hidden by him. People have to hammer these things out of rock. Other times, God makes another valuable treasure and puts it in the ocean. Pearls start out when an oyster or clam gets something like a tiny bug inside it, a bit like you getting a little rock in your shoe. The clam doesn't like the itchy, bumpy, painful thing inside of it though, so it starts making a liquid called nacre. Nacre coats that little annoying thing, making it nice and smooth and more comfortable to the clam. After lots and lots of layers of nacre pile up and dry, you get a beautiful, smooth, priceless pearl. Our Bible point today is that God comforts us. You are treasured. When you think of a smooth pearl, you can remember the priceless feeling of God's comfort. We even have a cool song about God's comfort. Bible Memory Buddy will help us remember that God comforts you. You are treasured. Ready to dig into another day of adventure? Then let's swing into the excitement. This is Wilder, and he's a squirrel monkey. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's related to squirrels. Not even close. Well, they do both live in trees, but that's about all they have in common. Wilder is actually related to marmosets, 
tamarins, and capuchin monkeys. They're one of the smallest monkeys, only weighing around two pounds. That's about the same as, mmm, three cans of soda. Wilder may be small, but you'll always find him with friends. You could spot squirrel monkeys playing in the trees throughout Central and South American rainforests. Treetops are the best playground. Wahoo! Monkeys like it so much up here that some days their feet never touch the ground. God gave him great balance and a long tail that helps a bunch. Wilder's tail is what you call prehensile. That means it's awesome for balancing on tiny branches, but he can't use it to hold things. Some monkey troops can be as big as 500 monkeys. Wow, that's a super troop. Hanging out with so many friends keeps monkeys safe. They can all make a bunch of noise if a predator like a snake or a jaguar is around. Wilder likes starting his day with a good breakfast of fruit, but later in the day, he might snack on some bugs or spiders. Mmm, yum. When Wilder was a baby, his mom took care of him until he could take care of himself. She got him food, taught him how to find food, and sometimes carried him around when he got tired. Wilder's mom has soft fur that's comforting when things seem big or scary. Does your life ever seem big or scary? Do things leave you feeling worried? Do you ever need a friend to make you feel better? Sometimes you just need a comforting shoulder to hug, to cry on, or someone to listen. You are treasured by God. He is always there to comfort you. God gives you peace, reminders of his love, and friends and family. Those are gifts from God, comforting us with his love in hard times. And the Bible tells us another reason God comforts us. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. God lovingly comforts you and you can pass that along to others. God comforts you. You are treasured. Wilder is a fuzzy, cute, cuddly squirrel monkey. When you think of comfort, you probably think of something warm, cozy, and soft, like Wilder's fur. God's comforting love makes me want to praise him. Let's go!
is ready to get started. Let's begin our day with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. We are so excited to dig deeper and learn more about you, your love and your comfort and peace. Please guide us to discover more. Help us to treasure this day. In your name we ask, amen. If you thought yesterday's totally true Bible adventure was a little dangerous, we've time traveled ahead and things are even worse. The city is under siege. I hope you are safe wherever you are. It's not safe to stay out in the open. Take cover wherever you can under a blanket, table, or piece of furniture, and I'll explain why. It's been years since David was king. King Hezekiah is on the throne now, and he's in trouble. We're all in trouble. There's a nearby country called Assyria, and they are our enemy. In fact, the Assyrian king sent his army to conquer Jerusalem. They're outside the city walls right now, and they are way too many of them for us to fight. They have chariots, they have axes, they have spears, they have bows and arrows, and they have a really bad attitude. When they conquer cities, they take everything worth anything and burn the rest. And they're mean to the people in the cities too. King Hezekiah gave lots of gold and silver to them so they would go away, but here they are and they're not leaving. In fact, here's what they said to our leaders. Hey Jerusalem, just give up already. You have words, but we have a huge army. Who do you think is going to help you? Another country? Your God? No country can stand against us, and your God doesn't care about you. When we have your city surrounded, you'll starve. You'll die of thirst. Give up now, and we'll let you live. Your God didn't save any other cities we conquered, and God won't save you. Open your city gates and come out right now. It's your only chance. King Hezekiah hasn't opened the gate, so I think we'd better take cover before the Assyrians start check, chucking rocks over the walls. I want you to huddle together with whomever you are with and take cover, and it, an attack could come at any moment. Now that you've hunkered down, let me ask, do you think your blanket will really help you if a rock is tossed at you, if arrows come at you, if a spear is tossed at you in your direction? How about if a chariot comes ro roaring through, pulled by two giant horses? Take off your blankets, they won't help. This scroll is full of mean, hurtful words and lies. Maybe you've had somebody say things like that to you, or you felt worried that something bad was going to happen. Let's try something. With someone at home, you can make your own bad news scrolls. Write about a hard situation or draw a picture of you, something that scares you. Feel free to pause this video and then unpause when you are done with your scrolls. When King Hezekiah got bad news on a scroll, he took it to God. God loves you and he always hears what you say, so let's try that. Wherever you are, spread out around the room so you're sitting as far away from others as possible. King Hezekiah took the bad news scroll and laid it out in front of God. Now lay your bad news scroll out in front of you. He prayed something like this. Why don't you whisper the words after me? As you do, think about what you wrote on your paper. God, you have all the power and might. Here are hurting hearts. Rescue us. Now share with someone near you a word that describes how it feels to lay your worries or fears before God. God hears you. You are treasured. And God heard King Hezekiah too. He said comforting words through the prophet Isaiah. Here in Bible times, prophets tell us messages from God. Isaiah told Hezekiah, God says not to worry about those Assyrian bullies, God will defend you and take care of them. As for you and your people, you're going to be okay. In fact, soon you'll have plenty to eat and your nation will grow. How would those words be comforting to Hezekiah? When someone comforted you with words, 
As for me, I was a little girl and my first name is Donna. And people used to call me Donald Duck all the time. Well, it would hurt and I didn't understand why. But my mother, God bless her, she gave me a good hug and she said, I love you. And I know God loves me too. <laughs> Share with someone around you about a time when someone comforted you with words. You can pause your video and then unpause when you're done sharing. God comforts you. You are treasured. Sometimes God comforts us by putting people in our lives who give kind or reassuring words. Can I tell you a secret? I know how this whole Assyrian mess turns out because it's right here in the Bible and found in 2 Kings chapter 19. After comforting King Hezekiah with a promise that God will fight for him, God kept that promise and wiped out the Assyrian army. Take a moment, roll up your bed and your scroll, and tape it shut. When you look at your scroll, remember that a mighty, powerful, and loving God stands with you, and he treasures you. Won't you say a quick prayer with me to give thanks to God? Dear Lord, thank you for keeping your promises and comforting us in times of trouble. Amen. Thank you for being here with me today. Please come back tomorrow for more Bible adventures. Bye-bye. Welcome back to Vine Dining Snacks. It's hard to believe that we are halfway through our treasured adventure already. Today, we are going to make comfort fries. Yes, we get to eat French fries today. Savannah, aren't you excited? Fries are one of your favorite foods, right? Yes, they're so awesome. <laughs> and today's snack is very easy to make. Hmm. All you need is frozen thick cut fries. About 10 per person for our elementary friends and five per person for our preschool friends. You also need? You also need baking sheets. Get some help from an adult when handling these and working around the oven. Absolutely. And, and what else? And ketchup or dipping sauce of your choice. We have ketchup today. To make the fries, just follow the instructions on the package. You can cook them in the oven or air fryer. We did ours in the oven for 425 for about a half an hour. Now, while you're waiting on your fries, or while you're eating them, tell someone at home about a good memory you have of eating fries with family or friends. Who was there? What were you doing? Why is it such a special memory? I love when my grandmother takes me to McDonald's for french fries because they are so good <laughs> and I enjoy our special time together, just me and her. <laughs> yes, that is special. Now did you know that fries are sometimes called comfort food? Hmm. Comfort foods are filling foods that just make us feel good, such as a food that a parent or grandparent always makes to help you feel better when you're sick. Savannah, what are some comfort foods for you other than french fries? Ice cream is one of my favorites. Oh, ice cream is one of my favorites too, along with my mom's meatloaf. <laughs> now share with someone near you about other comfort foods that you enjoy. We all need comfort in our lives. I'm glad that God, God comforts, comforts you. You are treasured. Second Corinthians 1-4 tells us, he comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Isn't it so good to know that even when we can't eat our favorite comfort foods, we can, we can always find comfort when we need it by talking to God. Absolutely. We hope you enjoy your comfort foods. Fries. Now tomorrow, you will need small six inch tortillas, sometimes referred to as street tacos, butter, and fruit jam or jelly, or cinnamon sugar. Ooh, that sounds good. I can't wait to see what we're making. See you soon. Bye-bye. Now eat.
Welcome back to Kid Vid Cinema. I'm really glad to see you today. Today we'll watch another story about a real kid just like you. But before we get started, I want to see your hugging skills. Find someone you can give a big hug to. Or if you don't want to hug, try a fist pump or a high five. Hugs can be comforting, and that reminds me that God comforts you. You are treasured. I love that we can help comfort each other and that we're getting to know each other so well. And we're also getting to know some new friends in our videos. Let's explore what the Bible says about God's comfort. Today's verse comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. Get your Bible and turn to the verse. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Did you catch the why in that verse? God comforts you and then you can comfort others. Let's pass on some comfort right now. Give someone with you a pat on the back and that someone can give you a pat on the back. Let's talk about what comfort can look like. What's something someone has done to comfort you? Who could you do that comforting thing for? Isn't it cool that one way God comforts you, you are treasured, is through other people and that you can be comfort to someone else. Let's watch today's video to see how God used kids like you to bring comfort to other people. It's been a difficult time as people all over the world deal with coronavirus. Through the struggles, we've seen some awesome ways that people share God's love. Some communities even drive their cars around to make parades. We found some amazing kids who've been shining God's love through these hard times. Some kids are helping by making colorful masks. Others are opening up their backyards for neighbors to gather. Let's meet a few of these cool kids who are bringing comfort. First, we're going to meet Ben. He uses his musical talent to share God's love. During the coronavirus shutdown, I FaceTime my grandparents every day to give them a music concert. I hope this song gives you guys hope. also bakes cookies and makes cards with his family to cheer up people in town. Music and cookies are a great way to spread God's love. But there are so many other ways. Here's Sophie. She used art to bring joy to her neighbors. Go ahead. What did you paint here, Soph? A cross. Why did we paint it on our window at the front of our house? Because we want, what is it called again? Encourage? Encourage. Who? Care. The people who is walking by. Sophie also delivers bags of donations to members of her community. And then there's the Prada family. With their church, they deliver food to people in need. It was great to be able to serve with the people of all ages. It felt really great to know that I, what I did was making a difference in somebody's life. I loved be being able to be part of the kids tent during the food drive through We got to give kids an arts and crafts kit and some snacks and sweets. But the best part was getting to pray for them as they start their new school year. Yeah, it was awesome to pray for them. Yeah, that was so cool. Look at all these people these kids could help. Food and prayer definitely bring comfort when you're sad. Now let's head to Atlanta, Georgia to meet brothers Riley and Bo. What we have been doing this season to help people who have been affected by the pandemic, we have to put, put together bags of arts, of art supplies and snacks, and then we've given them to people in the local area who have been affected by this pandemic. Also, we have been, um, we've been making signs for teachers to know how much we love and appreciate them. Bye. Bye. We found a cool kid who created a VPS in her backyard. Hi, my name is Evangeline and I'm nine years old. And my favorite part about Gerd BBS is that they have amazing songs that I can sing and dance to. But during COVID, me and my family and lots of other kids, 
couldn't attend the BBS. So I decided to write my own BBS called Backyard Adventure because we're stuck at home all day. It was supposed to be just for me and my family, but then we, we shared it to a lot of churches on the West Coast. So now, kids like me and my brothers can have fun and learn about Jesus. She even made her own Bible Memory Buddies for her backyard BBS. Like Paige T. Pigeon and Heather H. Hascat. God comforts us when life is hard. And we can pass along His love and comfort to others who are hurting. In the Bible, the book of 2 Corinthians says, He comforts us in all our troubles so we can comfort others. I wonder how you can bring comfort to people in your neighborhood. Whatever you do, you'll be helping others know that God comforts you. We hope you're inspired to spread God's love and make a difference in your community. God comforts you. You are treasured. Wow, that's a cool story. I thought it was amazing how many different ways kids found to comfort others during the COVID-19 pandemic. But I bet you've done some awesome things to comfort others too. I have a question for you. How did someone else show comfort to you during the pandemic? Share with someone at home. Thanks for sharing. Sometimes we feel sad or discouraged, but God comforts you. You are treasured. Today's Buddy Wilder helps us remember that God comfort, comforts you. You are treasured. And he has our Bible verse to help you remember to pass God's comfort along with others. Wilder is a squirrel monkey. Make a noise to show what you think a squirrel monkey sounds like. Perfect. Make those crazy squirrel monkey noises as you take out your Bible buddy, Wilder, from your treasured student pack. I had so much fun with you today. I love seeing you comfort each other and your squirrel monkey noises were amazing. It's almost time to go, so let's hold Wilder in our hands while we close with prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your comfort. I pray for everyone here who is hurting that they feel your comfort and I pray that we can all be a way that others experience your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye, see you tomorrow. Hello friends, Joe here from First Baptist Church of Woodstown. Welcome to Imagination Station. I'm happy to see you. You won't believe the surprises we have in store today. We're going to have so much fun together. Did you bring your imagination today? You are definitely going to need it today. I was talking to my friend Wilder, the squirrel monkey earlier. I think you've already met him. Wilder was telling me something surprising. You know, he really doesn't like to brag, but squirrel monkeys are some of the cleverest monkeys out there because they have such big brains. So not only are they super cute, but they're also super smart. They can think fast on their feet. Are you fast and clever? Let's find out. Everyone, hop up. I'll point in one direction and you can hop only in the opposite direction. So if I point this way, you have to hop that way. 10-4, good buddy? Well, you certainly are fast on your feet. You must have bring brains too, so let's give it a try. Remember, if I point this way, you hop that way. Let's hop. Faster. Awesome job. Wow, you are clever and fast on your feet. I think even Wilder would be impressed. Now that your imaginations are up and running, let's look at our talk starter question for today. Ready? Squirrel monkeys like Wilder live with their friends. Do you think squirrel monkeys live in a very large group called troops or with just one or two other squirrel monkeys in squads? Okay, 
Let's get that drum roll going so I can reveal the amazing answer. Brrrr. The answer is squirrel monkeys live in large groups called troops. Their troops may have as many as 500 monkeys. Wow! But troops are usually smaller with around 50 to 60 little wilders running around. Still, that's a lot of squirrel monkeys. Now that I know you're fast on your feet and clever, I have something I think you'll be very interested in seeing. In fact, it's a mystery surprise. But don't be nervous. Today we are learning that God comforts you. You are treasured. This is my mystery bag. Inside it is something some people are afraid of. Other people might not want to get too close. And other people don't mind it at all. I mean, out in the wild, I wouldn't want to come face to face with this fellow. But I managed to capture a whole family. Whew. I mean, it wasn't easy. Oh, I can hear it moving. Maybe it, I woke it. Can you hear that? Some bite, but I'm pretty sure these won't. I don't think they will, but what if it escapes? Boy, that wouldn't be good. Now, I'm a little nervous, but you know, it's probably be fine. What do you think? I, I, I can see some of you are very adventurous. And to start our adventure today, you'll need to be clever and fast on your feet like Wilder. And we already know you're both of those things. I'm going to be great, brave and reach inside. Okay, adventurers, let's take a look at what's inside. Are you ready? Wait a minute. That's, that's not scary, is it? That's just a silly fake spider. What a comfort it is to know that this stuff is nothing but wire and some fluffy stuff. But I could see some of you were pretty uncertain, maybe even nervous, about what was inside of the mystery bag. When you feel nervous or afraid, God comforts you. You are treasured. You're just experiencing something called anticipation. You might have noticed changes in your body. When I anticipate something or get nervous, sometimes my hands get sweaty. Have you ever been nervous? Our brains get busy when we feel nervous about something. Whether we're anticipating something good, like an amusement park ride, or something unknown, like a mysterious critter inside a bag, our bodies have a physical reaction. We can get sweaty hands, <laughs> wobbly legs, our heart can pound, and you might even get a stomach ache. Our brains send out messages to our bodies and our bodies react when we get nervous. But you know what? When we feel anxious or nervous, we can trust God to be there for us. It's kind of like reaching into the mystery bag and realizing it's only a silly piece of wire instead of something scary. We can give our worries to God because God comforts us. You are treasured. Now it's time to learn about our sciencey fun gizmo. Here's something else that might make you feel a little nervous. Let's take a look in this package. Hmm, danger, caution, do not enter. Sounds intriguing, maybe a little scary. What do you think when you see all those warnings? I wonder what's inside. This is called an alarminator. That means it might cause us alarm. It is mysterious, but you know what? We can give our worries to God. Let's see what it is. God made you all fast thinkers with big brains. So this alarminator is a fun way to remind you that even when you're scared or nervous, God comforts you. You are treasured. 
Let's make some Alarminators you can use to make your friends and family experience anticipation. Decorate the envelope with lots of cautions on the outside. On the inside flap, write God comforts you on the inside with a pen or pencil. Ask a big person for help. Flatten the rubber band and poke each end through the hole in the blue plastic compass. Loop the ends of the rubber band around each end of the C-shaped piece. Twist the compass about 15 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Then slip it inside your envelope. Fold the envelope closed. Test out your Alarminator on your friends and family. It's a fun surprise our friends and family in ways that makes them sweat a little. But the neat thing is that your Alarminator is harmless fun. There's no danger here, but it is a good reminder that we can always trust God to be there for us. Well, when you're anxious or worried, God comforts you. You are treasured. Go try out your Alarminator and remind others that God comforts you. You are treasured. See you tomorrow. Welcome to day three of Closing Quest. Terrific treasure hunters, I hope you had a piles of fun today. Let's keep the fun rolling by singing. making this trek terrific. There's more fun to find tomorrow. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for such a great day. Thank you for hearing our voices and listening to us, just like you heard David. You are such an amazing God. Please bless us with tomorrow's new day so we can dive into deeper discoveries and learn even more about you.
We love you so much. In your heavenly name we ask, amen.